We've been asked several times recently about wander lead tests and how to test bonding cables properly. So in this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at testing bonding cables, confirming the continuity of bonding clamps and also a brief look at the current carrying capacity of earth cables. Let's begin with main bonding. Main bonding is the bonding or connection of non-electrical or earthy parts of the premises to the main earth terminal. This connection to the main earth terminal or MET is called main bonding and is not to be confused with supplementary bonding which does not return directly to the MET. These are metallic parts of the premises that are not part of the electrical installation but they may introduce an electric shock hazard during an electrical fault simply because they give the electric current a path to earth. The list on this page is just an example of some of these parts and there may be many more in the premises. They are called extraneous conductive parts. They have no electric going to them but they can provide a conductive pathway for voltages and electric shock currents and by bonding them all to earth we hope to achieve equipotential bonding. All the metalwork becomes the same voltage during a fault and then the fuse blows. We also want to look at wander leads and we can begin with a look at a simple installation example. In this house we can say that the consumer unit is in the hallway and the incoming metallic water pipes are in the garage some distance away. The bonding cable passes through the wall of the house and the consumer unit and water pipe are 10 meters apart. We cannot see both ends at the same time and our test meter leads will not reach between the two. How then are we to test continuity of this bonding conductor? We will need to consider safe isolation before we test. We will remove the consumer unit cover to gain access to the main earth terminal or MET and to carry out the test properly we will need to remove the bonding conductors from the earth clamps. Why then should we remove the conductor from the clamp? If one end of the bonding conductor is in free air, we could only possibly test down that piece of wire. If the bonding conductor was broken or cut somewhere out of sight, and if it was left connected to the copper water pipe, there may be other connections on the water pipe that complete the circuit, and we would not know this. These are called parallel earth paths. You might ask if that matters, as long as there is a connection. Well, yes, it does matter. Your test meter on continuity test will only output about 4 volts and at a very low current, fractions of an amp. These parallel paths can handle a small voltage and a small current and still give good readings. But during a fault of 230 volts and several hundred amps, the continuity may become unreliable, leaving the customer exposed to danger. We need to know that the bonding conductor is not damaged or broken and removing it from the earth clamp is the only way. Because our test leads will not reach between the two test points, it is common to use a wander lead. This is just a long length of flexible copper cable that can act as a return path for our test currents. Wander leads can be purchased as purpose-made items with a known resistance and all the fancy clips and connections to make life easy, but they are expensive. I use a 50 meter reel of 1.5 millimeter single flexible conductor with both ends stripped and exposed for connecting my crocodile clips. It's a lot cheaper than a custom wander lead and works just as well. The first thing to do is to connect one end of the wander lead into the main earth terminal and this will stay there for the duration of the test. Fasten one test meter clip to the MET at point X and the other clip to the free end point Y on this drawing. Set your meter to low ohms continuity and null your meter to zero ohms. This will take out the resistance of the wander lead and readings will be just the bonding conductor. If your meter does not have a null function and cannot be zeroed out, simply make a note of the resistance of your wander lead as in this setup test and deduct it from the readings that you make as we will see. My homemade wander lead had a reading of 0.6 ohms. And do get into the habit of writing things down, don't trust your memory. Now take one end of the wander lead through to the garage or wherever the water pipe is, 
Connect your metre clips between points A and B and make a low ohms continuity test. Test current will flow from point A to the main earth terminal on the bonding conductor and back along the wonder lead to point B. If we get a suitably low reading, then this proves that the bonding conductor is continuous and OK, and we should record the result. So what would be a good result? This is a low ohms test. We want low ohms, very low ohms. Let's say that we had a 10mm bonding cable of 25 meters length and we attached our 1.5mm wonder lead to it. This bonding conductor will measure about 0 0.046 ohms and the wonder lead will measure 0 0.61 ohms. If your meter has been nulled to compensate for the wonder lead, you will get a direct reading of 0 0.046 ohms. If it's not been nulled, the reading will be the sum of both cables, 0 0.656 ohms in this case. But all we have to do is to deduct the wonder lead, 0 0.61 ohms, from that to arrive at our answer, 0 0.046 ohms. Simply connect together at one end and test at the other. In the first example here, We've measured 0 0.629 ohms, and our meter is not nulled. So, subtract 0 0.61 ohms for the wonder lead from this reading to find the bonding conductor resistance, which is 0 0.019 ohms. The next reading we do might be 0 0.66 ohms. Again, 0 0.66 minus 0 0.61 leaves a bonding conductor resistance of 0 0.05 ohms. And these are typical low ohms readings for bonding conductors. An important test that is often missed is to confirm that the bonding clamp is actually making good electrical contact with the metallic pipework. Carry out a low ohms continuity test between the bonding clamp and the pipework at points C and D on this drawing and expect a very low ohms reading for a good connection. If the pipe work has been painted, how do you know if the pipe was cleaned back to a bright surface before the clamp was put on? Or, as I've sometimes found, the clamp has been installed over the painted surface. The result of this is a very high resistance reading, totally useless in the event of an earth fault. You must make sure that your probes are actually making contact with the metallic surfaces of the clamp and the pipe before testing, and this sometimes means scraping back a little paint. I always try to scrape back the paint at an unobtrusive place, such as the join between the pipe and a gland, as shown at point D, or round the back of the pipe, out of sight. If we look in guidance note 3 at table B1, we will see the standard resistances for different copper cable sizes. The three cable sizes of interest in this video are 6mm, 10mm and 16mm. 10mm cable, for example, has a resistance of 0 0.00183 ohms per metre. And shown in this table are the three sizes with the respective resistances for 10m lengths and 25m lengths. But any length can be calculated for any of the sizes shown, and this is always useful to know. If we measured a 10mm cable as 0 0.0348 ohms, how long is that? And does the calculated length look about right for the installation? Simply take the measured value and divide it by the standard value per metre to find the length. Here, 0 0.0348 divided by 0 0.00183 gives us 19 metres length. Does this look right for this house? If the consumer unit and the water pipe were just 3 metres apart, then this tells us that either we have conducted the test wrong, that the cable is damaged, or the cable takes a long route to the water pipe. And just to help, here are the resistances of homemade wonder leads for 50 metre and 100 metre reels. You can use whatever you want for wonder leads as long as you null the metre or make a note of the wonder lead resistance before testing. So, finish testing, make good your work and reinstate the supply. Then complete the relevant parts of the test certificates before you forget the numbers. 
Let's look briefly at fault currents and a calculation that is very useful for earth conductors. We are sometimes asked how much fault current can flow in an earth conductor without damaging the cable. Put another way, if an earth fault occurred and it took the MCB 0.4 seconds to disconnect the supply, what is the maximum fault current that the cable can take without beginning to overheat and suffer damage? There is a way to work this out and we need to use a variation of the adiabatic equation. Shown here is the standard formula that you will find on page 92 of the winding regulations. We need to transpose or rearrange this standard formula into one that allows us to calculate the fault current I. You can follow the transposition on this slide. We've moved the I squared from the bottom of one side to the top of the other side. Then we move T from the top on one side to the bottom on the other side. Now we can square root the I squared to arrive at I just on its own. Because we square root one side, we must square root the other. And that is it. I in amps is K squared times S squared divided by T and then all of it is square rooted. Let's do an example of this. K is 115 for a copper conductor with thermoplastic insulation from the regulations book. T is 0.4 seconds because we will assume domestic final circuits and the MCB or fuse will operate in less than 0.4 seconds. And we will calculate this value of I for each of the 6, 10 and 16 mm earth or bonding cables. Using our formula for I, we simply put in the numbers that we know. For 6 mm cable, the calculation will be 115 times 115 times 6 times 6 and then divided by 0 0.4. That answer is then square rooted. And that is it, it's so easy. And out pops our answer, 1090 amps. So a 6 mm earth conductor can take a maximum of 1090 amps of fault current for a maximum time of 0 0.4 seconds before it starts to suffer heat damage under ideal conditions. Here is the calculation for 10 mm conductor. And now the calculation for 16 mm conductor. A main bonding conductor is provided for equipotential bonding in a property. It will connect all the earthy, non-electrical services and structural parts to the main earth terminal or MET. 10 mm copper bonding conductor is recommended for all new installations and 16 mm for the earth conductor. Some older properties will have smaller sizes of earth and bonding conductors. For a TNS system, 6mm can be left in situ if this is the size in the wiring regulations in force at the time the installation was built and the cable will carry the prospective fault current for the property. Smaller sizes should be brought up to current standards. Thank you for watching this video, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar, select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description and each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the top left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector, page 2, 3, 4 and so on that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. Once again, 
Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.